Hey guys, it's your boy Harry Wilmington here. Welcome to Harry Dating Combos. And today we're going to be answering a question from a guy that wants to know how to escalate to a hookup with this woman that he's been on five dates with. As you can see, by the way, guys, I'm on vacation now, so that's why I've been doing a whole lot of videos. It's actually my 20th year of my uh, graduating from college, and so I'm doing the alumni thing this weekend, and I'm out of town, so uh, won't have a lot of videos till I get back. But I did see this and was like, you know what? I got a little bit of break time. I'm gonna answer the question. If you have a question you want answered on the show, write to me, harrywilmington at gmail.com, or leave comments below. Also, like and subscribe to this video. All right, and for the guy that's listening to this, if you want, if you want to show your support, consider sending a cash app. All right, so this guy's question, he says, I went on a fifth date with this girl, and she planned and paid for the date. So we're now at the, at the phase where the woman is going to be investing in and putting her money on the table, and that is admirable, because five dates is the halfway point to what you need to get to, which is 10 dates to assure that she's ready for a relationship, mostly. But anyway, he says, she mentioned she likes hanging out with me and shows me a lot of affection physically, one of which is tongue kissing multiple times throughout the date. She's French. Fantastic. Glad to see that she is actually excited and exhilarated by these makeout sessions. That is always a positive sign and one that leads even more towards getting to potentially do stuff physically all the way. So then he says, despite all this, we still have not hooked up. Not saying I'm in it just for a hookup, but I'm also not trying to be an emotional support animal either. So I just, this is just for guys at large. I need you to get out of the thought process that you wanted to hook up with a woman from the time that you first meet her is a bad thing. And this is something that I also had to get over because I was the guy in college Funny that I'm in a college, my college weekend now, but uh, I was the guy in college that was very much the guy that was like, well, all these other guys out there are just about hooking up. So I'm going to be different and say that I don't want to hook up. But the reality is women also want to hook up. Their bodies are also designed to biologically want a man to enter her. The fact that she's been on five dates with you and the fact that she is escalating physically with you, those are all very positive signs that she's about that life. Like she's totally fine if you are also the person she hooks up with and if you're a person that sees her in a sexual way. That is perfectly fine. It is normal. Do not think that that is a bad thing because as you get more into a relationship, you're going to have to continue to be flirty with your girlfriend, your fiance, your wife, because they want to still feel desired by you in that way. Like, yes, women today want to be respected and they want, they want you to like them in part for how they think about things and how they feel about things. That is there. But they also want to feel desired and they want to feel like they can make a man lose control. And in the bedroom, your job is to lose control. So if at times outside of the bedroom, you're like, oh, you're looking so good today, babe. I could just jump you right now. Don't think that's a bad thing to say because they want to hear that because it lets them know that you actually really are desiring them and wanting of them in a physical way. So I just wanted to get you out of the headspace of thinking that thinking that way is not bad. It's perfectly fine to meet a woman and the first time you meet her, you're like, oh my God, I want to bang her brains out. Now, we know you're going to want her for other things besides that, but don't think that that's a bad thing to have that thought either. Anyway, so then he says, she literally does everything correct in the book. She initiates convos. She has asked and paid for the last date and voluntarily pays for other things in our past dates, accepts all my dates and shows up on time. So no flaking, that's great. Initiates most physical affection, i.e. kissing, hand-holding, cuddling, etc. That's great. I'm glad to see that she's initiating the majority of that because that means that you have a woman that is highly, highly interested. And then he says, oh, and uh, sends post-date text showing a lot of appreciation. So these are the things that I talk about. I talk about that when women like you, they're going to what? Do all the things possible to show you why it is that they want you. There's going to be no mixed signals. Unequivocally, you're going to know that she desires you. He says, for more context on my end, I only text her for dates. Perfect. Every time she tries to vent about something, I usually try to end that conversation politely and move on to better topics. So I will say this, like, obviously, you know, you don't want to be stuck in the space of being in a situation where there's just a lot of complaining and stuff going on. So I'm glad that you're able to steer these combos. That said, it's not the worst thing in the world to let her, let her vent for a little bit and like kind of sit there and hear about what she has to say and let her get it out and give some feedback even because what you don't want to do is also turn into the guy that on her end of things 
feels like you're always dismissing what she's talking about. Like, it's cool as a guy, for example, you're going to be able to objectively be like, what you're talking about is not a big deal or there's ways to fix that, etc. But doing that too much can make her feel like you're not in it with her in the moment. Like she wants to, she's venting to you in part because she's maybe feeling alone in the things she's going through and she wants somebody there to be like, oh, I totally understand that. Oh yeah, that totally does suck. Oh, I'm sorry going through that. Like there's that part of it too where you could maybe um, empathize a little bit more with her just so she'll feel even more that you get her and that she's feeling connected, you know? And then you can move on to happier stuff, right? Anyway, he says, she did go off on her feelings yesterday unprompted and I could not cut the topic without looking like like a dick. Uh, I don't know what that means. Like you say she went off on her feelings. Does that mean that she was talking about her feelings for you? Or was it feelings for like other things going on in her life? Like that part wasn't completely clear. He says, and yes, I escalate touch accordingly, but not too much. Does she potentially have low interest? I enjoy my time with her, but I don't know how to initiate the hookup conversation without scaring her away. Please let me know what you think. So I will just tell you straight up what the problem is here. The problem is the part where you say you escalate touch, but not too much. So here's the part where you as the guy have to take the bolder step, because as far as I'm concerned, this woman has given you all the signals that she is open for a hookup to happen. But notice I said open, meaning it still has to be your fault. So she's making out with you. She's touching you. She's telling you how much she wants you. She's saying, I'm having such a good time with you but you're only escalating some touch, but you're not escalating the touches that would take it to the next step. And this is the, the tricky part for guys because, you know, even if we see everything going right in front of our faces, like she's calling us, she's texting, she's paying for dates, she's kissing me all the time, we're doing this stuff and we're getting all lovey-dovey, but there's still a part of us that's like, but I still need full consent, I still need her to 100% say, hey, let's go to my bedroom and hook up in order for hooking up to happen. And I get in the age of Me Too and all these other things that as a guy, you want to take as many precautions as you possibly can. That is not realistic. Like that's the likelihood of that happening, of her just being straight up like, hey, let's go to bed. It's like maybe 5%. And, and the reality is it should be that way because you got to understand women want to do most of the work, but they don't want to do all the work. And so this is where the part of the hookup game comes in where you as the guy have to take all the signals you're reading and then based on those, make the decision of, you know what? I'm getting all these signals that she wants to go to the bedroom. So I got to move things to the bedroom. And so this is where you go from like, you know, simple things like you're making out and I'll, I'll, I'll give you a process I've used, for example, right? Like you're making out, having a good time. And then you just kind of like make out a little bit harder. And then as you're making out with her, you just kind of move your hand towards places that you would not normally place just to get a feel for how far she's willing to go. So you're kissing her, for example, and then maybe you move your hand down to her butt. If she doesn't react to that in a, in a negative way, great, you've passed the barrier. Then maybe you're like filling up on her, you kind of fill in her chest a little bit, and chest is like a big area because you know a lot of women, if they don't like you, they're like, you're, you're looking at them, you're touching them, this makes them feel uncomfortable. So, but if you're in that space where she's showing all these other signals, then you gotta start moving your hand to her chest and just kind of holding it there for a little bit, right? If you do that for a few seconds and she doesn't have a negative reaction, then that's when you go towards uh, things you can do that are going to like escalate her heightened sense of arousal. So for example, you're kissing her on the lips, right? Well, that's great. But there are other areas you can kiss that are going to heighten her arousal senses. I find, for example, the neck is a very good spot, like usually around this area right here, or even like kind of lightly licking slash kissing on their ears. These areas right here, if they don't start to go, oh my God, then they're probably like feeling weird about that and you stop. But most women, if you're in a, if you're making out with them and you kiss in these areas, you're going to start seeing them squirm a little bit more. They're going to make some more moaning sounds. And here's the important thing, right? If they're making the moaning sounds and they're not moving your hands away, moving your face away or telling you to stop, then those moaning sounds are the signal that she's down to do more. And then from there, you just escalate bit by bit. You kiss on other semi erogenous zones and then you maybe give her a massage maybe you like you feel under her shirt now you're like under shirt and under pants petting and stuff like that and then all, but but as you're doing this all you're looking for is is she either enthusiastically going along with what you're doing 
Or is she starting to do negative movements? Like, again, you're trying to reach for her butt and she pushes your hand away. You try to kiss her on the, on the neck and she pushes your head away. You try to reach down on her, like to, to unbutton her pants and she kind of like moves her hand a little bit. And just take those signals as, hey, I'm not ready for this step. But you have to make those moves. And I get it. There's a fear of like rejection or what if I do a thing she doesn't like? If she doesn't like the movement, every woman across the board, and most guys don't pay attention because they think that there's no way I can tell, like women will make moves. And it, it might be passive and subtle, but usually it's gonna be a push hand away. It's gonna be like, you know, oh no, not yet, whatever. Like just listen for those cues or look for those signals. If she makes those moves that are negative moves, then you know, okay, she's not ready for that step. And then you go back to the previous thing you were doing. That's it, all right? So in terms of having a conversation, here's the reality. And I know it's not, necessarily popular to say this today, you don't have a conversation because part of what women enjoy about hooking up with the guy is being able to read each other's moves as if they're in tandem, as if they're getting each other. And so you trying to sit her down and have a logical conversation about, hey, we've been making out for a few sessions and I think we should, we should like really take it to the next level and, and have a hookup. What do you think? It's not that it can't work, it's that the probability is low and a lot of times it kills the mood for women. And the, sometimes for women, the mood is more important than having the logical conversation about something. Like I, there's so many women that like will go on dates with a guy where they're not planning to do anything, but he sets the right feeling tone, he makes the right moves, and because he's in tune with her body, according to her, she starts to feel like, I now wanna do stuff. So. Take it like that. Don't make it a big grandiose conversation thing. Just you take it to whatever the next date is. You go back to one of your guys' houses. You start making out. And then from there, you just know, do certain moves. And then along the way, make sure you keep intel. If you're doing a certain touch, how is she responding? If you're saying a certain thing or doing a certain thing, how is she reacting? Listen for reactions. See what she's doing. Is she moaning? Is she not? Is she pushing hands away? Is she, is she? I've had women like take straight up, take my hand and pull it to the place that they want me to touch, you know? So these are all positive signs. So just look for the positive signs versus the negative signs. And then you move accordingly. And then at the point where it's like, you're really down to do some stuff, the biggest move you're going to make is you're going to have to pull down her pants and pull off her underwear. If you can manage to get her pants off, you're pretty good. And sometimes there's a button down there, or there's a zipper, and you're thinking like, I don't want to like mix up. Because I know sometimes I've thought like, if I don't get the button off exactly in the right way, it's going to turn her off and then it's going to be over. And that's not really how that works. If a woman is down to do some stuff, she will sit there for a minute and a half or more while you're trying to fumble with a button. And she'll, it darn near help you with the button and the belt and the zipper, okay? So, but yeah, like look for those positive signs and then assume that it's all systems go unless she starts doing negative moves. It really is that simple. You don't need a conversation about this stuff. Just go with the flow of things, read the signals that you need to read, and then hopefully that'll result in you being able to show both you and her a great time. So hopefully, guy, this helps you out. If that helped you, consider sending a cash app. For the rest of you guys, be sure to write me at harrywilmington at gmail.com if you want your question answered on one of these shows. Also, you can go to harrywilmington.com to check out my dating membership program that has all the advice you will ever need on how to attract women from how to do online dating, how to approach women, how to get them on dates, what to do on those dates, and everything in between that you would ever need to know about communication and how women function. So check that out at harrywilmington.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a like, give me a subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later once I get back from vacationing. All right, I'm out. Peace.